was in. Expecto Patronum! You'll be hearing from us. From the strategic homeland and... Just call us My shield. user has information that could... Well, could make this free system oh. again. <sighs> Smash. And here we go. Hola, como estas? Es en español. Muy bien! <laughs> it is uh, the return of the Geek Show. Uh, what are we, we are at episode uh, 17? I think we're at 17 now. Episode 17. My yeah. name is BJ. This is, of course, Big Rich. Hello! Thank you for joining us. And, uh, of course, we got to talk all about Avengers Age of Ultron. We both have seen it. It yeah. has made a boatload of money. Boatload. Uh, we're going to get into some other stuff, too. Um... But I think we need to, uh, first of uh, first of all, we just need to talk about how we felt and what, what it was yep. uh, that that made Avengers Age of Ultron so big. Obviously, yeah. the Marvel hype machine. The Marvel, machine. yep. They, they did a good job. They obviously, uh, you know, Disney obviously picked wisely when they decided to buy Marvel because Marvel knows how to hype just as much yeah, as did. Disney does. It was. Did you think it lived, did, you, did it live up to all of the hype that it got? Honestly, I don't think it lived up to all of the hype. Yeah. I think it was very close. Yeah. But honestly, I thought Avengers 1 was a, was better. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, for sequels, as sequels go, I mean, that's generally the rule of thumb. Um, well, actually, no, the sequels are usually better than, I think. Well, this- Wrath of Khan, Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. You know. Well, it depends on you know however many movies they're planning on doing. Right. The second one is usually the one that goes down the darker path, which I think this one did a little bit. Not yeah. like, not to the extent of some, uh, some, some second movies and trilogies. Right. Yeah. Um, but this one definitely uh, was a little bit darker than the first one. I thought that there was um, they tried really hard to like put bits, little bits of comedy into like throughout the whole movie. Yeah. Um, and I thought that after a little while, I was like, ah, you know what? I like Thor because he's tough, not because he's funny. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. So, you know, but overall, I mean, I thought it was, I thought it was really, really good. You know, I, I liked it a lot. Yeah. I, I'm, I have to go see it again. I would definitely go see it again. It was, it was that, you know, it was good enough for that. Uh, maybe, a, you know, a couple other times if need be, just so <laughs> I can, just so I can absorb everything that was going on in I that. feel like I need to see it again to absorb everything. They're, yeah. they God, they set up so much for heading into Phase 3. I know. It's it, a lot of stuff. Uh, now, the, well, here, here's here's the gauge that I've been going by, though, with, with some coworkers in that. Do you think Avengers Age of Ultron was better than Guardians of the Galaxy? See, um, I really, really liked Guardians of the Galaxy. And I don't know. That's hard to say. Um, parts of it, yes. Parts of it, no. Right. Um, you know, I I really like. I I love the cast that Marvel has for the Avengers film. You know, Chris yeah. Evans, Chris Hemsworth, Robert Downey Jr., Mark Ruffalo, Scarlett Johansson, Jeremy Renner, and now you know they're adding in you know Paul Bettany as Vision yeah. and Anthony Mackie is there as Sam Wilson, aka Falcon. I thought Elizabeth Olsen did a really good job yep. as Scarlet Witch. Oh, yeah. But the more you pile on, the harder it gets to focus on characters. Right. And I think I think that's one place that I felt Age of Ultron um, didn't hit the mark on. They focused a whole lot on uh, Hawkeye and Jeremy Renner and yeah. kind of because they didn't focus on him in the last one. Right. I mean, it's like, you know, it's like Marvel kind of overcompensated for the lack of love for Hawkeye. Right, right. And now, now, you know, but I mean, he did have, I mean, he had the pep talk. Yeah. You know, he had the pep talk scene and I thought he pulled it off really great. And I, I think, think it, it worked good in the movie. Well, I think it was important for him to have the pep talk yeah. scene because he is, I mean, in a sense, I mean, um, you know, Black Widow doesn't have superpowers. Right. Um, but he also doesn't have superpowers either. Mm-hmm. But I think she is more of a skilled fighter than he is. So right. I, I really think, and, and it's true in the comics, I mean, Hawkeye's kind of like low man on the totem pole yeah. when it comes to skills. Fantastic archer. Yeah. You know what I mean? I yep. mean, he's got that. He's a proven soldier. Right. So, I mean, uh, I think it was really important for him to emphasize the importance of being part of this team and showing what an important part of the team he was. Because at the end of the day, he kind of held them all together. Right. You know what I mean? He was the glue that stuck this team together. Right. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, he he was, and he had a lot of, 
I don't know. I just I I I, I have nothing to. You said it all basically. Yeah. So. Well, we're going to get into some um, spoiler talk here as we go on. So yeah. if you are listening, we haven't spoiled anything for you so far. Right. Um, so, But if you haven't seen the movie yet, it's been out for a week at this point. Right. So get on What are you waiting it. for? Exactly. It's so, already made 100 gajillion dollars. Quit, quit being chinzy and go out and spend the freaking 20 bucks. Between owning Marvel and all of the success that Disney has had with Frozen on top, like, you know, <laughs> I mean, they're talking about merchandise and oh everything. God, I mean, yeah. Dis- Disney is so profitable right now. Drop the ticket prices at the theme parks, I know. for God's sake. You, Come on. You got the money. It's like $100 per person per it's day. It's rolling in. Come on. Drop the drop the damn I mean, bring it, bring it down a little bit. Come on. Be, and, be nice. And that's our two cents on that. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. But, I mean, um, I mean, there was, I mean, but overall, I still feel that there was something a little lacking from Avengers. I think, you want to know what I think it was? What? I think that it, I think that it, it had a little bit too much in it. Not in the sense of like there was too much in like the Spider-Man movies. Right. You know what I mean? Like, cause yeah. there was definitely too much in like the amazing Spider-Man two and Sam Raimi's uh, Spider-Man three. Um, but I felt like they were trying to do too much cause they were one setting up everything that's going on with Ultron. Right. Who I thought was menacing, but not as menacing as I thought he was going to be. Yeah. I thought it was a right? little, there would be a little bit more to it where, I mean, cause it was, it was almost like the rest of the world had zero clue what was going on. Yeah. And from what I remember from the comics, you know, he was kind of a much bigger badass with blowing stuff up. Well, I mean, he would directly attack Avengers Tower, which right. he did. Um, you know, the the mansion, he, you know, but this seemed more um, in tune with, like, you know, because he's talking about the extinction and everything like right. that. You know, the big, ex- big extinction events that have happened on Earth, so... You know, I think going to the was Sokovia. Yeah. Um. You know, going there and wreaking havoc on this third world country and everything is is going to have the bi- biggest ramifications for what's going to happen because they after everything happened and it didn't go and it didn't end at all like we were saying. Right. We thought that the end of that movie would would dive right into the events of Civil War, but I'm thinking that's not the case. No. Um. I I'm mean- wondering Ant Man set something up. Maybe I think maybe that might be, be uh, why they're starting to hype it. Because I mean, they well, obviously we know why they're hyping it. They want to make money on the movie, but that's also the. I mean, if you if you go to see the movie, which you if you haven't done, why are you waiting? Again, mm-hmm. um, the Ant Man trailer is before Avengers, obviously, because yep. that's the next movie coming out this summer. Mm-hmm. Um, and from all accounts, it looks really good. Um, but that also ties into another story we're going to cover later on with yeah. with Captain America. So uh, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it did have just a, it had too much. Ultron just for me didn't seem as badass as what I remember. But then again, uh, yeah, you know, I agree with what you say. I so. just remember him being so smart in the comics, yeah. and I feel like he was to a point, but yeah. he was also not. I mean. Obviously, the the heroes are going to overcome and and foil the right. villain plan. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, there is that element, and you're, you're never going to escape that element unless it's one of the Saw movies. But, right. um, I I just I, I just felt like he he was in in the comics. He always seemed smarter. You know what I mean. Yeah, the way he went about things. Right. But he, I mean, by no means is Ultron gone. If we've learned anything from his existence in the right. comic book world, Ultron. His 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 uh you know his way of thinking his memories his everything his, his all the things about him are somewhere floating around and I think that it was good that they kind of used the example of the internet you know he's floating around on the internet so he's right. just looking for that next the next body that he can go into right. which I thought was really interesting the way that they did everything with the vision where he was trying to make the perfect body for himself right because he was going to put him into the vision and it wasn't going to be the way that it ended up which turned out to be you know, Jarvis's thing. Right. But let's backtrack a minute and talk about the whole situation with Jarvis and the birth of Ultron, I right. guess. Uh, did you like, did you like it? Did you, you know, I, you... I, well, I mean, aside from the fact that they kind of changed his origin from, yep. from Hank being, uh, his creator, which we, to which start we knew was going to Tony. Happen. Yeah. I mean, we knew, we kind of knew that going into it. Um, I, I was okay with it. <laughs> um, I was like, you know, when, when he kind of gave the, the bitch slap to Jarvis, right. 
Uh, I was, I, you know, I, I didn't, I knew Jarvis was going to come back. Obviously we knew that Yeah. based on the vision and you know, that Jarvis was going to be the vision. Mm-hmm. So uh, it was just a matter of when and how, you know, he got around it. Um, but uh, all in all, I thought it was, you know, really cool. And I, and I love the fact that, um, you know, that vision's able to handle Mjolnir. Yeah, just, I know. You know, he's just. And I don't know when you saw it when 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 the scene came up where where Vision just kind of pulls Mjolnir out of thin yeah. air, you know, what, did everybody like in the whole theater gasp? Yeah, the whole theater kind of goes, "What?" Yeah, there was a, it was one of those moments. It was one of those moments, I, and I thought that was really cool. There was one other moment which we'll get into in a little bit that did that in the theater too. And if you saw the movie, you probably know what I'm going to be referring to. And if you haven't seen the movie, well, then tough cookies because yeah. we're talking about we're it. We're talking anyway. about it. We gave you plenty of time to get away from the spoilers, but you exactly. know, if you're listening, even after all this, tough. I thought that the um, that the birth scene of Vision was pretty cool. Um, you know, the whole coming to be of Ultron, I thought was was really interesting with the whole they were using the mind gem, which right. I thought everybody I think thought it was going to be the soul gem because right. it was soul and everything, but yep. it's the mind gem which is key in Infinity War, which comes out in 2018 and then 2019 with the two parts that they're doing. Right. Um, but I thought that the, you know, Tony and Banner are, you know, trying to find the perfect AI. And they're right. trying to, they, they want to have peace on Earth because of the vision that Scarlet Witch gives Tony, which shows that he has caused the death of the entire team. Right. You know? Yep. Which, you know, how much... I mean, the, for for the trailers that we saw, I mean, I feel like ninety percent of the trailer was like their visions. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, like ninety percent of the trailers that we saw, besides like the big fight in the beginning where right. they're taking out um um oh God. the Hydra base. Yeah. Um. Besides that, though, I thought you know we saw a lot that had to do. With the uh, you know Hulkbuster and yep. the Hulk and everything, right. which is exactly what we thought it would be, where it was something where the Hulk had lost control right. and they needed to get him you know back where he needed to be. Um, so I thought that was cool. That scene was awesome. Yeah. By the way, I I loved it. I I kind of I I love that the Hulk can be a hero, but I'm confused as to the way that they're going with it because how can he be so self aware at some points yet so unaware of right. his surroundings at other points? Is it just the way that it, it happens, like the rage just really starts to take I over. I think it's the right? focus, yeah. I you think know? it's how he's focused on what is making him angry. I mean, if if he knows that, you know, like if he knows Hydra is yeah. there, he that's where he's going to focus it, and he's just going to beat them all to, to, you know, to hell and back. Did we ever find out what the dream was that Scarlet Witch had showed him? Did we ever find that out? Did he say anything? I mean, I feel like he went nuts. They they were able to wrangle him back in with the Hulkbuster armor and whatnot. Right. But I don't remember, and, you know, correct us if we're wrong, let us know, but I don't remember them talking about it. I don't remember it at all, no. Like, so. what made him that angry? Yeah. That he was out and he was just going to crush everything. Yeah. You know? I, I, I don't know. It, they never said, so um, I'm wondering if maybe this is a setup for a Hulk movie with another character, because obviously... After what Ruffalo yeah. said about uh, Marvel not having the rights to a solo Hulk movie, might be a team up kind of movie. I mean, a couple of my friends were saying they'd love to see Planet Hulk. Uh, well, I think or everybody World would, War Hulk. Yeah. You know? Well, I'd like to see both of them because we can. I think that both of them will be cool. I don't know how Planet Hulk would work out. I I mean that would be that would dive into the Guardians of the Galaxy. I, th- territory, I, think, I think yeah. I think if you saw the Hulk with with Guardians, <laughs> that would be that would be pretty cool. But you know, and maybe that can tie into to World War Hulk or something like that. Or, but I don't know how you could do World War Hulk like that because that's per that's a pretty big event. And yeah, I mean that pretty much means the the planet just gets you know completely smashed up. I just don't I I don't see him doing it, but it would be really cool to see. It would be kind of cool to see. It, it doesn't I mean, really fit in with what they're doing currently. And right. I mean, until twenty twenty, they don't have any plans for any other Hulk movies. Yeah, they haven't confirmed if he's going to be in Civil War or not, though, have they? Because I mean, we're we're gonna talk about it in a little bit, but they just kind of uh, up. they just released the whole list of all of the people, and this is today. You know, we're recording this 
on uh on Thursday, May seventh. Yeah. Um, they just released today uh, an entire list of right. all of the people that are going to be appearing in Civil War or Captain America Civil War, and they might as well just call it Avengers three at this point. At this point, yeah, they um, might as well. They so, may as well call it Avengers Civil War, but I know something significant happens in the comic books right. during the Civil War that has to do with Captain America. So I think he is going to be the main focal point right. of this storyline. Obviously, uh, yeah, you know him and and Tony Stark, mm-hmm. and obviously, just like in the comic books, and then. There, but there was no mention of Spider-Man, but then again, they haven't cast yeah. anybody. Exactly. No casting yet. So, um, but I mean, we might as well just jump right into that then, since we're yeah. already sagging into it. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, so, so. But I mean, overall, we, we really liked Avengers. I thought the Hulkbuster scene was cool. I yep. thought Ultron could have been a little bit... Badass. Yeah. A little bit more badass. I think we both agree on that. Yeah, we both agree. Um, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, like, uh, you know, did you like, did you hate? Um, I actually, I actually liked it. Uh, it was pretty. It was pretty good. I liked them too. Um, you know, and the big WTF moment. Yeah, that we were referring to before. Yeah, was I, I thought that entire movie. Right, you're meeting Hawkeye's family. You're right, seeing how he is. He's being all inspirational. You think it was? Him? You I, thought it was? I thought they were setting him up to die. I thought that too. I thought that Hawkeye, because we knew somebody was going to die. There was a spoiler. A spoiler leaked out where somebody yeah. dies. Somebody important dies. Mm-hmm. They didn't say who. But now, you know, and I'm thinking, it's got to be Hawkeye. I thought it was going to be Hawkeye. It's got to be Hawkeye. They didn't show him love in the last movie. He hasn't been getting a lot of love. The, Hawkeye's gone. Somebody else is going to be taking over Hawkeye. Nope. See, I, le- I leaned over to my wife who was sitting next to me, and I said, I think they're setting up Hawkeye to die. And I said that right to her, and she looked at me, and she goes, I hope not because his wife has a baby on the way. <laughs> yeah, that'd be kind of cruel. <laughs> but I was like, but that's why it makes sense. And she's like, you're right, and that's really sad. But that's not what happened. Hawkeye does not die in nope. the movie. Um, but Quicksilver bites the dust. Yes. Which is nuts to me because they feel like they just set him up and they killed him already. I know. I mean, that's... he's gone. Uh, he is definite. I feel like yeah. he is definitely dead. Like, he is one and done. I mean, the only other thing I can think of is is that they didn't show it but that he you know he somehow survived but and cuz i mean his metabolism is much faster so he'd heal a lot faster so maybe he did live so it's possible i think i think you got to have a big gold question mark on is he dead i think that if he's not dead then i feel cheated because you can't have a conflict like this in Without a movie somebody world. somebody has to somebody has to be sacrificed but they did the same thing in the last movie Coulson came back yeah you know with agents of shield and everything yeah. so project tahiti or something right like yeah so maybe uh, you know maybe quicksilver is being exposed to the tahiti project i doubt it but it's like you said his metabolism is much faster right. so he could just be you know someplace right now just healing and right. it's going to take him longer than like wolverine or deadpool to heal but he yeah. can heal pretty quick right so you want all right? So let's say get, we, we got our feelings on that. I give it. Um, I'm gonna. I give it f- like four out of five stars. I'll give it four out of five as well. I I agree on that. Um, but I don't think it was quite five stars. I think it was good. I think I'll watch the hell out of it when it comes out on yep. Blu-ray. Um, oh, yeah. but um, it definitely it. I don't think it com- 100% lived up to the hype that it, it was. It, no, by. I I would say probably it was more like 90%, 85, mm-hmm. somewhere in there. Yeah. For the for the hype. So, but you know. Keep swinging, Marvel. You, I mean, you really. I mean, I'm really not disappointed in the movie. Do you feel disappointed? No, I'm not disappointed in the movie. Um, I think I'm just disappointed. I'm disappointed in the hype machine. Like, I feel yeah. like they should have. I feel like they need to hype some of these movies less because people are gonna go see. Them. Yeah. Like, let's be honest. Who's not gonna go see right. these movies at this point? Yeah. I mean, I mean, it was. I mean, they knew they were gonna get the money for it. Right. I mean, it wasn't that hard. Yeah. So. Uh, well, I'm excited though what's going down the line because the movie ended yeah. with Tony Stark leaving. Looks right. like he's hanging it up. Change, change up of the Avengers lineup, which is yeah. how it always. Thor has went been. back to Asgard. I thought he went back to New York to Jane. No, he no, no he went, went back to Asgard. He rag, jumped on the on the on Bifrost. The Bifrost, yeah, that's right. I remember now. Yeah, and then um, you know Hawkeye went back to his farm. Yeah, so he you know he's out right now. So the current at the end of Avengers: Age of Ultron, the current lineup. Right. Uh, it's Captain America as leader. Yep. And you got Black Widow is hanging around still. Right. Then you have Vision. Yep. Um, Anthony Mackie is there as the Falcon. Right. Um, Don Cheadle is back as uh, Rhodey, War Machine. Right. And then uh, Elizabeth Olsen uh, joins up the team as uh, Scarlet Witch. So now, now here's something that I was I was thinking about the other day, which is kind of weird when I was thinking about 
you know, this uh, for the podcast. So you got War Machine. Yeah. You got you got Steve, you know, Captain America. Technically, Rhodey's a colonel and outranks Steve. <laughs> so he should be the leader. So, yeah. So what's up with that? I, I mean, don't I, I don't know. I, I don't know how that would work. I mean, obviously, Steve's, I mean, mm-hmm. was Steve ever actually commissioned as a captain in the in the United I States so. Army? I believe so. Well, if you go back and watch the first Avenger, I believe he is he, a captain. He was. Like a full-on captain. So, so basically, you know, Cheadle, who's a... Yeah, he can order him around. I think he's a full bird colonel. Yeah. So, what are you going to... It's different factions, though. Isn't he Air Force? Air, still, Colonel outranks, you That's know, true. Colonel will outrank a captain in any, That's just true. about any, except the, uh, I think in the Navy, I think a, I think a captain in the Navy is the same as a colonel, I okay. believe. Okay. So, so, um, but, but, all right, but just a little point I just wanted to bring up. I, I don't right. know why, but. So that, well, so that's where that leaves it off with a new team assembled. Right. Which is normal. The other yep. guys are now considered inactive. Yep. These are now the active members. Yep. And got, I mean, they've been active long enough to where now, you know, yeah. these guys will pick up the pieces. Um, and that, you know, leads us into uh, Captain America Civil War and the big announcement. I mean, because they, I believe they just started production on this. In Atlanta. Right? Today? Today, they said. Yeah. Um, they announced that the cast would right. be including, yeah. um, I be, they obviously Chris Evans, yep, yeah. as Captain I, America. I got the list. I got the list right here. Okay, uh, Chris Evans, um, uh, well, is you know going to be Steve Rogers, Captain America. Robert Downey Jr. as yep. Tony Stark. Mm-hmm. Scarlett Johansson as Natasha Romanoff, I, aka Black Widow. Sebastian Stan, uh, who uh, is going to be back as Bucky, the Winter Soldier. Yeah. Anthony Mackie, mm-hmm. Falcon. Awesome. Uh, Sam Wilson. Uh, Paul Bettany as Vision, Jeremy Renner as Hawkeye, Don Cheadle as uh, War Machine, and Elizabeth Olsen as Scarlet Witch. Right. And, and if you scroll down... And if you scroll down on the website that we're looking at, um, Paul Rudd will be there making his first appearance alongside the Avengers. He's going to be Scott Lang, Ant-Man. Um, and then there's additional cast of... Uh, Chadwick Boseman, who is going to be T'Challa, uh, Black Panther. Emily Van Camp returning as Agent Thirty Three, Agent Thirteen. I'm mm-hmm. uh, thinking Shield for Thirty Three right, there. Yeah. Um, and then we got uh, Frank Grillo as uh, as Crossbones. Uh, William Hurt as Thaddeus Thunderbolt mm-hmm. Ross, and Martin Freeman, yeah. who has not been named yet. You might know Freeman from. Uh, Sherlock, the BBC yep. series, as well as the Hobbit, the, the movies. Hobbit movies. He played Bilbo. Yep. Yeah. Uh, um, one of the one of my favorite roles that he ever did was um, was Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy as Arthur Dent. Yep. Yep. He did a fantastic job in that. Um, so no word on who Martin Freeman will play. I've heard rumors that it's supposed to be some like interrogator who is um, you know, in the comic books. Okay. Um, but um. Other than that, every, yeah, it's all I speculation. Saw, I think I saw that rumor as well. Yeah, right. a guy in a, like a black suit with yeah. sunglasses. Yeah, I saw that. Well, he'll just be like, you know, he'll be a shield agent. I, I'm thinking that he's probably going to be there uh, to provide some sort of comic relief because Martin Freeman, I think, uh, just the, his delivery and the way he right. acts sometimes he can be. He well, I mean, he's very, very funny. Right. I mean, he can be, but, but he I mean, can be very serious. Yeah, too. he's a good dramatic actor too. If you've seen some of the. Some of the scenes in uh, the BBC uh, Sherlock series. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. he's he's really good uh, with that kind of stuff. And so it, now you got Cumberbatch, Cumberbatch, and, and Freeman. Got, right. So you got Sherlock and Watson. It's a reunion. Yeah, I wonder if we'll see Freeman and uh, maybe make a cameo in Doctor Strange. That'd see, be funny. I'm I'm actually I I thought maybe we'd see Doctor Strange in Captain America: Civil War, but. Yeah, no I don't Stephen know. Strange for us yet. Right, no Stephen Strange. Just the name drop in Winter Soldier so far. Yeah. But there are there are rumors saying that he could be making his first appearance in, an, in the Iron Fist series for Netflix. Since that would be they're cool. They're kind of buddy buddy. Yeah, I mean they were. I mean because they were both part of the Defenders. Right. So that would be kind of cool to see, you know, see that drop right there. And on Cumberbatch Netflix. is is no stranger to television. So I right. mean, it's not like he's too big for it. Yeah. So um, I think that that would, uh, and if they choose to introduce him like that, that would be cool by me. Um, if not, I th- I honestly think that the cast list is going to continue to grow. Yeah. For Civil War, because of the event, because of what it is, um, I'm going to be really curious to see 
who they end up casting as Spider-Man and his involvement because yeah. of like the rumor that it can only be a, a little cameo, but right. I think it, it needs to be more than that. But, you know, we'll see what they have planned. Right. But they said that this, that Captain America Civil War, you know, with all the events that are going to be happening in it. Right. And you got Crossbones back, which leads me to believe that maybe he's maybe he's going to kill Captain America because in Civil War in the comic books, after everything is said and done, right. Crossbones takes out Cap. Now he comes back to life, right? Later, obviously, because right. no one ever dies in the comic books. But he dies in the comic books, and then Bucky takes over right. as Captain America for a little while. So maybe that's what we're going to end up seeing here, <laughs> because... which would be which would be interesting if they go that route. Yeah, because I mean, last time we saw Sebastian Stan in Winter Soldier, he you know he saved Steve mm-hmm. from drowning in the river, but he's still all confused. But he's still confused, but. You know, doubtful that he went back to his masters. Well, I mean, Hydra, you know, messed with his brain so much as the Winter Soldier. But, yeah, no, he definitely didn't go back there because, I mean, he just he knew better at that point. Right. I think he's just trying to figure things out, to be honest with you. But, I mean, I liked I liked the Winter Soldier character a lot. Yeah. Um, You know, to me, it's very similar to like the Red Hood a little bit, minus, you know, the fact that Red Hood is a jerk. But. (laughs) Um, yeah. But, you know, I, I really, really enjoy I really enjoyed Sebastian Stan as the Winter Soldier. So yeah. uh, I'm really excited to see him come back. The thing that intrigues me the most is that Paul Rudd is going to be yes Ant-Man in this. Yes. Um, because there are other rumors now that because we didn't see real. I mean, we saw a little bit. Right. Of a little bit more tension building up between Steve Rogers and Tony Stark. But right. at the end of the movie, they, they are shaking hands and they are team members again. Right. Um, and Tony Stark leaves, right? And he, you know he goes off, but where is he going? You know what I mean? He's yeah. not hanging it up. I think it's still going to be a thing where secrets are the the main driving force between uh, Captain America saying that he's had enough of it and everything, right? But also the cataclysmic event that the Avengers have once again, uh, you know, been thrown into with the events that happened at Sokovia because that has got to lead to not like a superhero registration that we saw in the comic, right. but something, some way of well, keeping tabs on that. I'm thinking it's like the, well, I mean, like in S.H.I.E.L.D., the index. I think the yeah. index is what's going to be the catalyst for Civil War yeah. going forward because, I mean, l- I mean, look what happened in the last episode. Well, and, and I everything. think that something that, I mean... Obviously, superheroes to a point, people with abilities and gifts and things like that are now known right. uh, in the MCU and all over the world. Thanks yeah. to it's not a secret. I mean, they're on the no, news. And... It's not. Um, so I think what we're going to see happen in Ant Man is the fact that Hank Pym was designing some suit when you shrink him down, he becomes super strong and yeah. everything like that. Um, but he got that suit and it's his, and he gives it to Scott Lang, Paul Rudd. But you know. Uh, Darren Cross is taken over, you know, and and taken on uh, Hank Pym's research and everything, and he wants that ability. Right. Because I think that what you're going to see is people want the abilities. People don't want to be left out there. What if Thor goes crazy or the Hulk comes smashing through right. my door? Like, yeah. I want to be able to defend myself. So I think this is what we're seeing, and I think that this will be a big setup for Civil War. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So now you have regular people. Yeah. And, you know, Hawkeye and Black Widow are regular people, but they're, you know, with S.H.I.E.L.D. Right. And then you got regular people like Scott Lang who will have a suit now and, yeah. it, tur- and it makes him a superhero. So, I mean, that that sort of thing well, to well, me. Well, then, but then you got then you got um, Michael Douglas, Hank Pym, yeah. you know, in the trailer saying you can't have give the, the soup, you know, you can't give these godlike powers. To everybody, it'd be chaos. Exactly. So, um, well, I think that that's what, you know, that's what, you know, Darren Cross, Cor- Corey Stoll's character. Right. I think that's what he's trying to develop. He's trying to develop suits that would, that you could have as soldiers. And I think this is, this is where, you know, well, how do we regulate these people comes into play. Right. And I think that that'll have a, a big impact on it, which is why you're going to see Scott Lang in Civil War in, what is that, 2017 or 2016? Is that next year? I believe. I think it's next year because yeah. it comes out the same time as Batman versus Superman. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, it, it's going to be interesting. That comes out in August, right? Yes. So, August. August. We'll know what's going on. Yeah, maybe. maybe. I don't know. I thought we'd know what was going on by the time we saw the end of uh, Age of Ultron. Yeah, they totally threw us for a loop. They what, totally threw what, us for a loop. What did you think of the tag, uh, the tag scene there? Uh, Tag scene, I thought... 
was pretty cool. Um, if you didn't see it, um, it was Thanos once again, who is being pretty heavily tied into this Avengers universe, right? Uh, through at just you know end credit scenes at this right. point. Um, but I think what what it means, and what when we'll describe it for you, but. What you see is you see Thanos, you see like a like a something open, right, right, and it reveals the Infinity Gauntlet. One, uh, there's the, right, there's, there's two, there's right, two, okay, because what's in the uh, treasure room in Asgard in Odin's treasure room, I believe is I believe is the right hand gauntlet, okay, or was this yeah, and the one we saw on screen, yeah, was the left hand gauntlet, yeah. So, but we see him gra- he grabs it and he says, "Fine." I'll do it myself. And that's where and that's where it ends. And right. that is leading us into Infinity War, which is years away at this point, but it was a really nice tease and I thought they set it up well because right. in the first Avengers, Thanos tried to use Loki to gain control and destroy Earth with yep. the Chitari and it failed. And I think that by somehow some way influencing and getting the mind jam into the hands of Tony Stark and creating Ultron was also part of his plan, but he's sick of going through a third party. You want, he's yeah. cutting out the middleman. He's going to do it himself. Right. So why does he have this gripe with Earth? And I think that we're going to learn more about that in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. You know what I mean? But why does he have this gripe with Earth? Why does he... What does he see in the human race that he needs to dominate yeah. and destroy them? And it's obviously got to be something with Quill. You know, yeah, Star yeah, Lord. It's gotta right. be because his that's, father. That, yeah, that's gotta be it. P- you know, Peter's father probably pissed him off or something. So I don't think it's gonna be. You know, in the comics it's Jason, but I don't think that that's that's going to fly because you know he's part of uh, he's part of the Shi'ar, and that's uh, yep, that's Fantastic Four, and, right? And X Men. So yep, 20th so, Century Fox owns that property. Yeah, so that's not gonna be happening. So right. we'll, we'll as we get closer, I guess we'll find out. Yeah, we will. Um, but they're setting up a lot of stuff. I mean, the Thor dream sequence and everything showed everything that is going to be coming to pass. I think that sets up Ragnarok, which is the end of all things in Norse mythology. Right. Um, in the in Ragnarok in the comic books, I believe Asgard is completely destroyed and Thor is killed, and it has to kind of like come back from the ashes type situation. Right. So. See what happens. I don't know. We'll wait. We'll find out. All right. So anyway, um. So that's most of the Marvel stuff. We'll 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 touch on some other Marvel stuff after. Uh, there's uh, also some news that came out for Supergirl. Yeah. Um, now this is for the part of DC that seems to be um, getting things mostly right. It seems to be working out well for them. Yeah, the television side because obviously the movies, not so much. No, no. Um, Not the only, I mean, the three most successful, and people will 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 hold on to nostalgia, and, and they'll love those Christopher Reeve, and they'll love the the Tim Burton Batman's right. and everything like yeah. that. Um, but at the end of the day, the Chris Nolan Batman movies are like the three biggest movies that DC has yep. ever put out. Um, Man of Steel was disappointing um, to a lot of fans. Oh God, um, you know. So, but the TV universe that DC is developing now. Right. Um, with Arrow and the Flash, and they seem to be adding more to that yeah. with this Supergirl news. Right. So basically, uh, the series star Melissa Benoist is that how you? You got me. I don't know. Uh, she is going to be be Kara, mm-hmm. uh, and she's going to uh, be 24 years old in this. Yeah. Same powers as her cousin Superman. So I'm wondering if they're going to actually have Superman, uh, you know. Henry Cavill? Well, I, I don't I don't think they're going to put Cavill on television. I mean, Cavill was on television. He was in the Tudors. Um so I mean, he Right, but they're not I don't think they're going to put him because he's Superman. I don't think they're going to, you know, I, my my guess is this is a completely separate universe which you know, is not going to work in DC DC's favor in my opinion. It won't it won't, but I think what we're what we're seeing a little bit of um, as far as Marvel and the com- and the combination a little bit, is that it's it's getting to be a little bit too big for them to constrain, right? You know, because some some of what is going on on Agents of Shield is going on in the in the movies and everything like that. But Agents of Shield, I think, has developed into its own universe, right? And they're kind of like, all right, well, we'll tease a little bit about what's going to be going on in the movies, but for the most part, I think they're kind of becoming their own thing, right? Which is what DC's. TV series are doing as well. Yeah. Um. So you know, I think that that's 
doing that. I, will this Supergirl thing, will it be tied into Flash and the Arrow? That's or the other like question. That? I mean, um, it's that's the, I mean that's the thing because um, it's not it's not on the same network. It's going to be on CBS. All right. Well, CBS owns the CW, right? So that could work. Yeah, and they were talking about they were going to have it kind of across uh, CBS's properties. Okay. So now you've got Callista Flockhart as Cat Grant. Um. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that name. Something Lee. <laughs> I don't. <know. laughs> I don't know, and, and and in radio they teach you not to pronounce, try to pronounce the name. So she, but there's going to be um, some actress, last name Lee. It's going to be Kara's uh, foster sister, um, Alex Danvers. Um, Jimmy, we're going to we're going to see Jimmy Olsen, okay, uh, and we're also going to see uh, Hank Henshaw. Uh, so I mean, this is all, and this is all coming about from uh, executive producer Greg Berlanti. Oh, uh, so yeah, from so, Arrow and Flash. Yeah, you know, so he's gonna be he's gonna be the exec on Supergirl, uh, along with Andrew Kreisberg uh, and Sarah uh, Schechter, and, okay, as well as uh, Ali Adler. Those sound like very good comic book names, by the way. Well, you know, this could all tie in because we know the success of the Flash and Arrow. Right. Um, and while Arrow has uh, some of the more recent episodes, it's kind of been lacking. This third season hasn't been the greatest since the first two seasons they, of Arrow were they gotta very, be, I very good. I hope they're good. building up to something because they're well, running out of episodes. This most recent episode I thought was was very good, and the one before that was also back to very good to me um, with, with Oliver you know, making his transition and taking over as Ra's al Ghul and everything. I thought that was really cool, and the added drama of you know his trickery or is it not trickery? Right. I have no idea. It's hard to say. You know, with you know his team, no one trusts him now because he is he is just he, he's totally abandoned everyone right. at this point. He said, "I'm taking over," and he does it all to save Thea's life and everything. But I think that this this whatever is going on here is going to lead to some big things on this show, yeah. and it's going to lead to some big things on the Flash because the next two episodes of Arrow and the Flash, I believe. They're going to be teamed up. One, to take out the reverse Flash. Right. Two, because I think they're going to need to team up to take out Raj Al Ghul in the lead. Right. So my question, though, is does that mean that that Oliver comes back from uh, Nandapar Bat yeah. just, for, just to help, you know, Barry and then goes back? Or because, I mean, Flash is on before Arrow. So I'm kind of getting the idea that I'm thinking... timeline events happen on the Flash you know. Well, and the CW actually admitted that they kind of screwed up the whole timeline, um, <laughs> which is why the so. last few episodes didn't really mesh that were supposed to be crossovers. But, um, uh, yeah, I would say that you're right. They ha Flash on Tuesday has to, you know, is, is now post-Grod. Right. Um, even though we don't know what happened with him when he was jumping to at the end of the most recent episode. Right. Uh, but I think that then you see Barry... Something must happen in Flash, and then Barry goes over to like Starling City to meet up with uh, to meet up with Oliver and company. Not that, right, you know. I I don't know. I mean, it's it's. I'm kind of I'm I'm a little confused by it. So well, it's confusing because they messed up the timeline and everything. It, yeah, and that I mean that's that's a stumbling block. Now, did you also point. notice in Arrow that uh, the thing? that Ray Palmer had Felicity sign was a transfer of ownership. So right. I think he's transferring his company to her. Right. Because he's going off because he's going to be part of this spinoff, which to me says if he's going off to be part of this spinoff already, yeah. you know, they're already saying peace out. We'll see you later after you're in this one season and established as the Adam now. Right. Um, is it going to happen in, by the fall? You know? That's what they were saying. I mean, I mean they they they've were, already they got all... a lot of casting rooms. So, they do. I mean, or not casting rumors, casting confirmation. Yeah, I mean they were they were all hyped about doing that, getting it up and running for the next season. Mm -hmm. So they must be well on their way to getting it. Getting it. I mean they've got they've already got Brandon Routh, you know, signed. Yep. So and then whoever, and Firestorm will be in it. Yeah. Um, in one way or another. Um, and then you also have Hawk Girl. Yeah. Uh, who was cast to be in it as well. Yep. Um, I don't, you know, I don't know what's going on as far as, uh, you know, Roy Harper and Arsenal in the show. Um, my wife was reading an article that said that the actor 
just kind of wants to be done with it and kind of go off and do something else. Right. So I think he was passing the torch to Thea, which goes back to the theory that you had. That she's going to be speedy. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, um, which I always thought speedy came first. So, well, speedy did come first. Well, then, all right. So, but, but they were the same character. Arsenal and Roy Harper were, are speedy. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's just grown up. Right. Um, as Arsenal, but, um, and he has like a, what, a metal arm or robot arm and stuff like that. Right. They, they didn't do that (laughs) on the show. That would have been really silly. That would have been weird. So, but all right. So, I mean, we, we that seems like it's going to mesh though. That does. And it's by the same creator. Yeah. So there'll probably be some, not as much crossover, right. but some slight crossover. Yeah. And maybe it'll cross over to the other show, too. Well, as long as they keep the timelines straight, I think. This will be difficult because it's going to be on CBS. Yeah. It's really ballsy to me that they're going with CBS on this, That too. That is. I mean, you know? prime time, you know, national kind of network thing. I mean, CBS has been around a long time. Just give them a good budget to do it with. Yeah. Because I think that The Flash has had some really great graphics on that show. Yeah. And Arrow's graphics have been pretty good for the most part, too. Right. Um, Shield has been a little bit, you know, not so great at some points. But, hey, what are you going to do? But if they give Supergirl a good a good budget, I think it could thrive on CBS. It, I think so, too. Well, and, and two, they're also kind of being safe because, you know, we like Superman. We like Supergirl, the whole, right. you know... And everything, but so do old people. And I think CBS is the old person network when you think about it. I mean, you got NCIS. <laughs> that might be what they're trying to do. They're trying to, get, they're trying to get more younger kids to come over to the network as well. And also capture their active audience. Right. So Yeah. And, and plus, you know, you start putting everything on one channel, then it's kind of becoming the comic book channel. Yeah, you know? exactly. Comic, you know, CW stands for comic world. Right. You know? I'd be cool. I'd be cool with that. I would be cool. I'd be, I would be totally cool with an all comic book character channel you know a guy that i work with was saying that he was reading something where if you take all of the people from guardians and avengers and the whole mcu and you were to put them in a movie and give them equal screen time right the movie would end up being like five hour five and a half hours or something like that wow and i was like man that's long but yeah i'd watch it (laughs) yeah if they had an intermission I would, I would, oh yeah, throw in an intermission. I would definitely need an intermission. Well, I mean, look at the look at the whole uh, Avengers marathon thing. Yep, that was like what twenty eight hours, something like that. Yeah, and you I got a was, medal at the end. I think it was, I think it was sixteen, but I think oh, that 16. they're they're saying that um, when these other ones come out, they're going to do it again, and it's going to be like a forty eight hour thing. Just think about how many more movies are coming out before oh that. That's like that's like going to Comic Con. I couldn't I, I, I couldn't sit through that. No no way. Yeah. I, I love those movies, but I need to watch them at my leisure and I can't no, I, I couldn't sit yeah, through that I, long. I, that's that's a little too long for me. It would drive me a little bit crazy. Yeah. I'd get fidgety and antsy. I'd need to switch seats, like Yeah. Especially if I've already seen the movies like five, six times. Yeah. That kind of thing. I mean, yeah, it's nice, but I think if if it was kind of like uh well there was this one theater I went to in uh Dedham in Massachusetts okay. with my uh, in-laws and we had, you know, had my daughter and my wife was with me and they had like recliners. Yeah. On, you know, with the, you know, the, the feet thing came up and you were sitting back. You were comfortable. Was it an AMC? I believe it was. Yeah. AMC theater. Some of them, not all of them, yeah. um, but some of the newer AMC theaters that have been upgraded are nice. And I've heard that they've got, you know, there, there's like apps that you can, you know, you can basically tell them what seat you're in, what row and seat, and make, place an order. And they'll bring the order to you. You pay for it online, and they bring yeah. it to you. We need to be more comfortable in the movies. That's well, right. I, I did the uh, the Regal Premium Experience or whatever the heck it was yeah. for, for, I forget what movie we went to. It might have been the, the Hunger Games uh, Mockingjay Part 1. But we went to that. The seats are unbelievably comfortable. Yeah. Um, you know, the screen is big, it's crystal clear, it's you know, it's it's not quite IMAX size or level, did but they bring you food? They yeah, well they didn't. We brought our own in when we, we got, you know, the popcorn and the yeah. soda and everything, but um it, the I've never been so comfortable sitting at the movie. There was there's there's supposedly a place I heard about in Texas where you can like sit it's it's like almost like a dinner it's like oh. dinner in a movie. Okay. With a take you know, they they got like a big table in front of you and um it's like you're eating at home in you're front of the eating TV. In front of the TV, basically, yeah. So they're that's... encouraging it in public now. I know. So <laughs> you know, I'm well, okay. Well, I'll have the I'll have the uh, surf and turf. Yeah. With uh, Coke and uh, make sure get... you bring me a nice big bib so I can. Can I get Can I get the shirt. sweet the sweet steak fries instead of the regular steak fries? <laughs> you know, the sweet potato steak fries. So. Yeah, I was uh, like sweet steak fries. What do you got? Sweet, maple syrup sweet on or potato. something? <laughs> 
You, well, you do. You put maple syrup on the sweet potato ones. You do. You ever tried that? No, I've never tried Try that. Next time, next time, Vera makes. See, I learned something new. There you go. Vera and makes. I do all the cooking. You do all the cooking. There you go. I'm taking credit for it now. <laughs> <laughs> Vera, bus, bus, Vera. She won't. She won't listen to this. She won't listen. Well, she'll start listening. That's okay. To it. I've got her Facebook page hey, right here. Hey, you know who? Uh, you know who told uh, her that she started listening to one of uh, our podcasts, but got completely lost in it, but thought that we sounded great. Yeah. My really? mother-in-law. Really? My mother-in-law said, she goes, oh, I saw it, and I started listening to it because I wanted to hear BJ, and she goes, and I thought that, you know, that it sounded like a great show, but I had no idea. No what idea what we were talking about. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, thank, thank, thank you. Thank you, BJ's mother-in-law. Yeah, for, for listening and yeah. being confused. But, yeah, you know, thank you for listening. If it was a sports podcast, she would have been on board completely. She would have been with it. Oh, I mean, yeah. we, we, we do get a lot of a lot of our friends listening. And just to kind of get off on a little quick little tangent, mm-hmm. uh, uh, my friend Tracy, who uh, I used to go to school with, uh, Gloversville High School, um, she, she told me that her and her uh, co-worker uh, listen in their, I guess they have cubicles where she works. Oh, really? So they listen. Well, hello. Hello, guys. Thank if you for you're listening. If you're listening to this episode, yeah. thank you. Well, I usually, you know, I usually make sure they know about it. Yeah, so, of course. You know. But we got, you know, we got a lot of people that listen, and we love to hear your feedback about the show. XJockAlbanyNY.com. You can go there and uh, basically just leave comments, Yep. you know, right there in the post, or even better, uh, Stitcher, Stitcher Radio app, or even uh, iTunes, mm-hmm. the iTunes podcast directory. Uh, go there. Leave your comments, rate us, because the more comments we get, the more ratings, the easier it is for other people to find us. And if you really like us and you want to share, share us with other people, uh, you know, so they can get in on all the fun, please let, you got to let them know. You got to let them know. Uh, all right. So we talked about Avengers. Yep. We talked about Supergirl. Yep. Captain America. Yep. Uh, we kind of delved a little bit into Flash and Arrow. Yeah. Uh, not too much. I mean. What what did you, I mean? So I mean, what did you think of the the Grodd episode overall? Well, I liked the Grodd episode um, overall. I thought that it wasn't the Grodd that I was expecting because they didn't go with like the Grodd style from the comic where he's like the super intelligent ape from Gorilla City. Because yeah, I, I mean, saw in that reality, in the live, when we were when you were doing the live yeah. tweet, and we also do live tweeting every Tuesday night during new episodes of Flash and uh, Agents of Shield. Yeah. Um, but I, I liked it. You know, I thought Grodd was, was pretty good. Um, I, I thought that he was way more terrifying yeah. than a super intelligent, uh, you know, it was, it was English accent monkey from, yeah. <laughs> from, from Gorilla City. But, um, he was, he was terrifying. Yeah. He, he was a very, he was a scary villain. And when he's like looking at Detective West in his eyes and he's, you can hear his thoughts yeah. and you just like the 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 man who plays Detective West on the show. Yeah, he's what a fantastic job acting. I believe you were scared out of your mind, sir. Yeah, <laughs> he he was really good. Jesse Martin is Jesse Martin. Yeah, Jesse yeah. Martin is an awesome actor. Yeah. So I saw him. Uh, I I bought a copy of Rent on DVD for Kim. Yeah. For uh for I forgot it was her birthday or, or dude can sing. Yeah, he can sing. If you ever saw the uh the uh uh the the quick little YouTube video he did. Yeah. Uh, uh, was it for Josh? Joss? It was for Joss Whedon thanking him because he had made a, a donation to the movie that he's producing. Yep. And he's producing it with the guy who uh, who plays Cisco on Flash, and also the guy who plays Eddie Fawn on Flash. Right. So, and they and they sang the theme to Firefly, <laughs> which was all, it's uh, it's out there. I love the theme to Firefly on its own, but the way that they did it acapella style kind of slowed it down as like a reprise. Yeah. I was just like, yes. It was good. It was really good. It was good. really good. So, you could check. If you, hey, go to x If you search the site, uh, you'll be able to find that because we posted that. We on. did post it, yeah. So my overall thoughts on, on, on the Grodd episode was pretty cool. I loved it. The, I mean, obviously, it wasn't a real gorilla. The CG was fantastic and yeah. lifelike, and it was it was really good. And I was, I was you know, I was scared, too. I was worried. You know, I'm sitting there. I'm watching Jesse Martin, mm-hmm. you know, being scared, and I'm like, is he gonna be like, like get pummeled, and he's gonna be like in the hospital at Might the end been of this pretty crazy if that episode? Happened. What's gonna happen here? I was. Well, he was in the hospital only with a couple of broken ribs. Right, but, but I figured he'd be a lot worse well, off. Yeah, you're dealing with a giant gorilla. Right, yeah, I mean, I thought it was kind of funny when he pulls out the banana, and he's like holding it up, and he's like, "You want, you want this? You yeah. want this?" And he's like, "I don't like bananas." Yeah. God hate banana. Yeah. 
<laughs> and then you had to go post that picture from yeah. the Justice League's like, ah, uh, yeah. no. No, he's there with a banana. There he is holding the banana. So the, Grodd does not hate banana. Yeah. Well, it depends on the universe, but. Right. So, uh, but yeah, overall, I thought the uh, the last episode. Well, I'm, I'm glad was, Iris is finally in the real. Yeah. Now she's, she's in the driving loop. me crazy. Oh, my God. Just figure it out. Yeah. Took you long enough. Well, just stop with this whole, I, could, I can't tell you because I'm protecting you thing. Yeah. That's, you don't have any problem telling kind of, her father, her boyfriend, right. your two scientist pals, Felicity, Oliver Queen, yeah. John Diggle, uh, who else? Laurel Lance. Who doesn't know? I mean, know? Who, right, she, literally, Seriously. she's the only person I, in this universe who doesn't know. The list that, the list that does, that, you know, that doesn't know is probably shorter than the list that it that does know yeah exactly i mean it's yeah anyway uh but yeah it was good finally iris is now in the loop uh she's on team flash we can yeah hashtag team flash so we can stop hearing hearing her you know complaining about eddie and all that and whining but that's the other thing too with eddie yeah with thawne dropping that that bomb on eddie so Mm -hmm. yeah that's that's i don't know how that's gonna play Right, Next he w- he was setting something up in this whole episode, and it was getting more and more evil and manipulative. Yeah. And you know, if he's first of all at this point in time too, I mean, I think after everything that happens with him being, you know, Eddie Thawne being captured, kidnapped, and held by Aobard Thawne. Yep. I think that um, something has to happen where he has to snap, where all of a sudden. Maybe it's different from the comics, and instead of worshiping Barry Allen, the Thawns just hate Barry Allen and yep. his legacy and, and everything. Yep. You know what I mean? So, I mean, you never know. There, there's changing a lot of different things, but the the show as a whole is working really well, and I'm really excited to see how they finish things up this season. Yep. Dive I'm, into I'm next. I'm very, season. I'm very happy with it. So, uh, moving on to uh, the other sh- uh, the other uh, CW show, Arrow. Yeah, uh, we touched on that also as well. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty happy with the last couple episodes. Yeah, because um, it was getting slow for me. But. Yep, it was. I mean, now we're seeing, you know, Nissa almost trying to take uh, Oliver's head off there at a wedding. Right. I mean, that's, their wedding. Their wedding, that's no less. Rude. I'm guessing the wedding night is not going to be no. as as pleasant as expected. Right. So, um, but uh, we'll we'll have to wait and see what happens next week for that. So, last thing on the agenda, Agents of Shield. Yep. And they threw a pretty big twist at the end. Super big twist. That was that. I did not. I seriously did not see that coming. I'm thinking. So so. All right. So here's the setup. So essentially, uh, Shield finds out where the Inhumans city is. Yeah. And they decide. Well, we're gonna send an emissary mm-hmm. to talk to these guys. We're gonna we're gonna try to hash this out peacefully. We're not. You know. Gonzalez was thinking we got to go in, guns a blazing, and take these guys down. Right, he was very, very hostile. Right, these people are a threat. Right, but Coulson, after him and Gonzalez had come to the, come to you know peace and decided Coulson will be the director. Gonzalez and the rest of his, uh, the little group there that were Shield 2.0 will be the consulting, uh, council for Shield, right. to you know for uh, for Coulson to get feedback from, um. They decide, you know, Coulson decides, no, this is what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. Gonzalez says, well, if we're going to do that, I should go. You should not go, Coulson, because you're too close to this right. because of Sky. Yeah. Coulson says, you know what? You're right. You go. And I'm thinking to myself, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to backstab somebody, Gonzalez. I know it. You're going to backstab somebody. So he gets there. Come to find out he does not backstab. No. He's actually really nice. Well, right, and you know the whole thing with Jai Ying and everything like that right. is, uh, you know, she's trying to protect these people who are not who, well, till now are not known to the world. They, people do not know that they exist. Right. They don't know they have powers. Um, Reina is there, and we know Reina has been manipulative, and, very manipulative. You know what I mean? Like yep. she, everything she does is for her. Yep, she is trying to be what Raina can be. So right. she's, you know, she, one of the things besides being all thorny and everything. Porcupine. Right. One of her powers is that she's clairvoyant. She can. She's a precog. Yeah. Right. Yeah. She can see what's going to happen. So she says that shield is coming. Yeah. She saw Quinjet's landing and uh, that it's, it's not, it's going to be very violent. And it all starts with Jai Ying 
she thinks she should be the one that meets with S.H.I.E.L.D. To which everybody kind of says, all right, well, everybody's been saying she's manipulative and out yeah. for herself. She was right. She was. I mean, I thought that she was playing it. Yeah, absolutely. I thought she was lying about the whole. I thought she was trying to take over as the yes. leader. Yes. Yeah, the me too. Right. I, I, I did not see, you know, it turning around like that where actually Zhai Ying she turned she she turned it around and she killed Gonzalez. I mean, it's almost like when you back an an animal into a corner. Yep. And they lash out. And I think that's what happened here cuz Gonzalez comes in. We've seen that he's hostile and everything. Right. So, you know, you and I as viewers are thinking, well, you know, what is this, Gonzalez? This is not what's he going to do? Right. He's going to screw this up. What's he going to do? But instead he ends up he gives Jaying a trinket that was recovered by Shield. Um, after Hydra had ripped her body apart. Right. And it was like some, like, you know, traditional uh, Chinese medallion that a mother would give to a child. And right. she said, that, you know, he said, I knew it was yours and I want you to have it. So she, he gives it to Jai Ying as like a gesture of good faith and right. starts talking about how they need to work together and everything. And Jai Ying brings out a Terrigen crystal. Yeah. Which apparently. They've been trying to develop because diviners are so few and far between right. that they don't, you know, they they don't have them as as freely as they would like to because we also learn, you know, the Cree saw see them as you know mistakes, so right. the Cree aren't like helping them become inhumans or evolve or whatever you want to say. Right. Um. So she takes the, she takes the Terrigen crystal and she smashes it and says that it's all mixed in with parts of the diviner. So it's harmful to anyone right. that's not an inhuman. Yes. And she kills Gonzalez. That, I, and I did not see that. I mean, it was just the second she took it out, and I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? No, don't do it. And she did it, and it was like. Now, nope. she knew what she was doing, too, because yeah. then she took Gonzalez's gun and she right. shot, shot herself. Right, right in the shoulder, too. Right. Like, she knew what was going on. Yep. And, you know, so where does this leave Sky now? Because she has been on Team Shield yep. and rallying for them and said, you know, we can't go in there. These people are peaceful. Right. don't mean any harm. And then all of a sudden her mother comes out. Yep. And she shot. And we know how hostile Gonzalez right. was in the past. I mean, he sent a team of people to kill Sky yep. at one point because he didn't know who she was. But, I mean, whew. That is... Next week is the finale. Yes. Next Tuesday. And it's a two-hour finale. Right. So, does that mean it starts at 9, or does that mean it starts at 8? I think it... I don't know. That's a good question. We'll have to look that up. Okay. But uh, if that's the case, we may be having two... We may have to figure out how we're going to do the live tweeting. Well, what's gonna, if it's on at 8, what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch S.H.I.E.L.D., and then I'm probably going to come into S.H.I.E.L.D. late. Okay. Or no, I'm going to watch Flash, Flash and, and then, then I'm going to come into S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, late. Okay. That's probably what I'll end up doing, because I think that... Flash has become my my favorite comic book show. Yeah, that I mean, I I'm always looking forward to Flash. <clears throat> yeah, you know, and Shield is Shield has been very solid right along. Mm -hmm. I like it. I you know, but any way you look at it, we got three hours of TV to watch next Tuesday. Right, and we'll be live next tweeting night. all three hours of it. Yeah, so hold on to your butts. Right, and make sure you go to Twitter uh, at xjockalbanyny. Follow us so you can be in on. Absolutely. That's right. And you can also go to the, and we also got our, our feed right on the website, com, mm -hmm. so you can go there and you can kind of read it there as well. Yep. So um, that's all we got on our list. I think, think so. I think we pretty much covered everything. Right. Um, and, we, and we made good time. Yeah, we made good time. We're, we're just about under an hour here. But then again, we got some, some pre-roll stuff there. So I think, we're, I think we're under an hour. Nice. I think we're in good shape. Right. So. Uh, but yeah, so if you, uh, want to be, uh, you know, in tune with the show, obviously website, xjockalbanyny.com, you can go there, uh, leave your comments on the website as well as get all our older shows, but you can also get them at, uh, podcastpedia. There's the, uh, blueberry, uh, podcast directory, stitcher radio, iTunes, um, tune in radio. I keep forgetting always, yeah. you know, we're on tune in as well. Um, uh, you know, so you can get it all in those spots as well. You, and, you can also get our stuff on YouTube now too. Yep, we're starting to put up on YouTube um, to make it even you know easier yeah. to find us. I mean, there's no reason you can't find us. Now. No, you can't. You, we, you should find us everywhere. Yeah, we we're, got our. We're over on Movie Pilot. Yeah. So I mean, we're in a. We are in a, so many places. Right. So, that 
we're soon we're just gonna put a chip in your head and you're gonna have you to. just have us it'll be it'll be like oh uploaded <laughs> yes there you go okay so uh but yeah uh leave your uh, leave your thoughts leave your comments at the website uh and as well as stitcher and itunes give us give us some uh show us some love we would yep. appreciate it yeah so we'll be back uh next week keep watching the website we'll keep you up to date on the live tweeting and everything as well so uh till next week stay geeky language.